Last week, we painted the base coat for this M1 A1 Abrams. I said there wouldn't be any more airbrushing, but I forgot the bedrolls and I had integrated them into the build of the tank and I really didn't want to brush paint them. So I painted them after masking heavily and no overspray. Phew. All right, on to the weathering. I wanted to create a little bit more of a deeper, richer look in the paint. So I went over everything with a filter, specially designed for uh, desert camouflage. And I picked out some panels on the top, not all panels, but I did do all of the side skirts. And I just think this adds a little bit of variety to each individual panel. You could do all of them if you wanted to. And I did even less on the turret because I didn't want that to be so orange. Then I mixed up an oil wash and I went over all the panel lines. I like to make my oil wash really uh, loose, really thin. Um, and I work in small sections and I basically put down the wash and then I dip my brush in some white spirit and I just feather that edge in. And I, I like how it gives it uh, kind of a shadowy look along all those details and it really helps pop out the highlights. This I'm using the wash a little bit more traditionally going through all the panel lines and rivets and welds. But again, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna clean up all those tide marks. And you can see I, you know, I, I probably did a little bit more. You can see it's already starting to dry there and it's a little bit more effort to rub that off, but that's okay because we are gonna go over this with additional layers. Now on some of the photos, the reference photos I had for this tank, there was a lot of scratching, which makes sense, uh, you know, in urban combat, um, you know, you'd be rubbing up against light poles, cars, all sorts of things that were in your way, even barriers sometimes. So I wanted to give this a fair amount of scrapes. And I like to, I like to kind of paint scrapes and scratches in kind of high contrast. So we had some like dark orange brown scratches, some really light scratches, and then some of these gray chips. Um, I start by using the brush. Um, I like that this gives me a lot of control on areas like this fender where I can really pull out the detail. Also some inner details where maybe a sponge um, would hit too many things. I like to paint those first before I start using the sponge. It's really important that you round your chipping sponge off so you don't have any high points that would collect a lot of paint and create um, a chip that was really recognizable. So if you have like a pointed sponge and it makes a triangular chip, it's really hard to show that that chip isn't being repeated over and over again. So if you use a rounded edge uh, sponge, you can kind of hide the fact that you're using the same chip pattern over and over again on all your details. And then here again, I'm just kind of filling in the areas that I wanted a little bit more chips. And I left the fenders uh, detached so I could have better access to the road wheels. This is the first time I'm using uh, this terrain paste. Um, it is acrylic, so you can use uh, water to thin it out, but again, you have to work pretty quickly. So I work in small sections, one wheel at a time. I put on the paste and then I use a wet brush to kind of smooth it out and blend it in. And then I went over all the areas that the reference photos showed. I uh, had some really interesting mud and streaks all over the fenders. The photos I'm using really caught my attention. It's not the same as 
the reference photo for the tank I'm actually building, but this was much more interesting um, in terms of weathering. So I kind of combined two tanks and I did the mud and grime from one and I did the main build for the other. So you can see how I'm just blending that in with water little by little and I like to pull it all the way through the panel so those tide marks never really have a chance to resettle. Now I'm using the same paint for everything uh, which is good because it's cohesive but it is a little bit one note and I'm going to fix that by blending in some enamel streaking grime and that's going to uh, add a little bit more depth to these streaks. The reference photo I'm using has these really cool splashes on either side and I just wanted to sketch them out first. I had a lot of trouble with the higher mark here. I erased it about two or three times but I left that in so you can see um, if you work quickly with some of these paste even though they're acrylic um, you can you know it's not exactly the first time you lay it down it doesn't have to be the way you keep it so this is what i was talking about i added some streaking grime which is an enamel um, so putting that directly over the acrylic doesn't bother it and you get the kind of sharper lines from the acrylic and then the softer lines from the enamel paint which works nice together this I was using some of that same streaking grime for fuel spills because uh, diesel is kind of a more orangey look. And here I'm just using oil paints and I'm stippling all the highlighted area with, it looks white, but it's, uh, it has a little bit of yellow in it and a little bit of gray in it. Um, but you can kind of play around with whatever tank you're using. This is to simulate dust and highlights. So here I'm using it as kind of dust that would have streaked down all the vertical panels. And I really blend this in because I really just wanted to use it as the streaking effect. But on the uh, flat panels, it's kind of meant to represent some dust and you know the sun. Uh, bleaching it out. Now I'm just using Aqualine's light mud. You could use oils, but I'd recommend protecting the enamel underneath with a clear coat. And I probably layered this five or six times and I'm just going over it with a damp brush after I laid out the initial streaks. They kind of blend away and let that dry and kind of do it again. And this is about the third pass that I did with this. Um, and it's really just meant to soften up the dirt and grime that you already see there. Next, I use a template to kind of guide the way I wrote the name for this tank. And I did it with a Sharpie, uh, so I didn't have to deal with brush strokes. And then I just covered it with dust. Again, to just simulate that it's been in the desert. So the last thing I did this week was paint some of the minor details. The caps for the smoke grenades and all of the panels that would appear as glass. So periscopes and this missile detection device. I painted everything with Alclad silver or chrome which is tricky to brush paint. But then I went over everything with this orange transparent paint from Citadel. Um, and I think it works pretty nice. I actually added some white oil paint to tone down the orange a little bit. And then I did the same thing with the taillights. And that's gonna do it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to follow along and see how this continues. Next week, we're going to work on all that stowage. See you then.